It's no secret that Darktide has had a rocky year. Let's take a look in your very own Darktide Wrapped. 2023 came through with a whopping 11 comms links, 24 hotfixes, and 12 patches, two of which came in two parts. Let's take a look in a little more detail. After a long hunting grounds Christmas period and a dwindling player base, we started the year off with an apology letter from the CEO of Fat Shark, Martin Arland, on the 24th of January. This mentioned how they realized they fell short of meeting expectations, promising to deliver a complete crafting system amongst other things, as well as delaying the Xbox launch. We would have to wait a month to receive the first main patch of the year, patch 4. This gave us Brunt's Lottery and the ability to earn or exchange blessings on weapons, which was a very welcomed addition to the game, before getting the Tools of War update a month to the day later on the 22nd of March. This gave us 10 new weapon marks, which included 4 swords, stubbers, bully clubs, shotguns, the Mark VI Power Sword and the Mark IV Ironhelm Thunderhammer. Whilst it was very much welcomed, a lot of the player base wanted to see a completely brand new, fresh weapon. Moving on, we hit patch 8 on April 18th for an honourable mention, as this is when they changed the plasma gun venting to hurt toughness first, rather than only damaging HP. For all you new players that love the plasma gun, you don't know how bad these dark days were. <laughs> Patch 8 made the Plasma Gun a beast, and to this day I believe is still one of the biggest quality of life changes for a weapon, but it was definitely a fumble to make it damage only HP, so really, you could say it's a bug fix. <laughs> May 29th came Patch 10 in what was regarded as the first major patch, which came in two parts and gave us the Ascension Riser and Archive and Sycorax maps, as well as the Chaos Spore monstrosity. But this wasn't enough to entice the hordes of players that had shelved the game after the rocky launch. A month later, on June 27th, we received the infamous Elite Resistance condition in Patch 11, getting a plethora of balance updates until August 7th, where we received the Auric Operations Board and Maelstrom missions in Patch 12, which was a huge quality of life update for players wanting to play hard conditions all of the time. Now, a real excitement was brewing. Patch 13 was coming and teasers for an entirely new talent tree had been dropped. This was a huge turning point and catalyst for change once it was dropped on October 3rd, seeing the concurrent player base increase by six times. Old players that had left and new players came to the game and the patch did deliver. The new talent trees gave us effectively eight new subclasses, which made up for the lack of those in the last almost year. Now, while this update was transformational, I had fears I expressed in a video I posted at the time, where I mentioned they will need to change the frustrating in-game systems, such as the lotteries around getting weapons, if they want to retain the players that they gained. I'll comment on this later in the video. Patch 13 was followed by a free page balancing update in Patch 14 before coming to today, where we have just finished receiving all of Patch 15's contents, which includes two new maps, one special assignment, new weapon marks, stims, and more. Patch 15 was overall received as a good update, however, there remained the same disappointment people had back in March for Patch 6, where whilst it was good to receive new weapon marks, people still want brand new, fresh weapons, which bridges into my thoughts for the future. It has indeed been a wobbly road, however, I do believe we are on a good path with the game now, but the path in my mind for now looks to be a little crooked. I'm pretty much going to be echoing my past comments, as I think we are going in the right direction of receiving new maps and content, but there will be a point, if not reached already, where players are tired of receiving only new weapon marks rather than a completely new weapon. I'm almost certain a single brand new weapon would be more positively received than five, six, or seven new variants for existing weapons, and the lotteries in the game need to be changed or just subdued even by a little, because it is one of the main causes that will see players leave out of frustration. When a player like myself can spend 45,000 plus steel, which I worked out to be almost 30 hours of in-mission playtime, to try and find a blessing at tier 3 or 4 and fail, you have absolutely no idea how much I molded over this. <laughs> the system needs to be changed. If that can happen to me, it can happen to everyone, and the average player isn't going to put in 30 hours to try and get something they want. 
so both the Brunt Lottery and Hadron Lottery need to be looked at or tweaked very soon in my opinion, as the player numbers are already on their way down. Mm. Criticism aside, I do still believe we're on the right path and the game remains to be one of the most enjoyable, incredible and amazing games that I've literally ever played, so I'll likely continue to play it for a long time just because of how much I enjoy the gameplay, but that shark just needs to recognise the issues the average player is going to face to keep them playing the game and the game thriving. But what are your thoughts on the history of the game and the vision for the future? Drop them down below so we can have a chat about them. I've got some new and old build videos coming soon, so drop a sub to stay tuned for those, and I'll catch you on the next video.